the top of the morning to you laddies uh today oh no connor's <laughs> already shaking his head in disgust no listen we sir you have, you have offended my people okay you have offended my my full name is irish okay and you've offended me okay well i have drunk a guinness so i'm basically also irish so. I, I mean that does qualify as anybody who drinks any guinness has yeah. enough irish dna to make them <laughs> to make them irish all right well uh you guys know because you saw the title of the video and you saw the thumbnail but we aren't just talking about one leprechaun movie today we are talking for some reason about <laughs> about nearly the entire leprechaun franchise we will be skipping one uh that we cannot say is not that bad and i'm guessing uh, most of you guys know which one that is but i'm getting ahead of ourselves myself whatever i'm gabe <laughs> and i'm joined by my illustrious co oh you son of a bitch <laughs> how does it feel you, you son of a bitch all right you know what you know what I am not an illustrious co-host, uh, but my name is Connor, uh, but I am also known as the conspiracy theorist who thinks Ozzy is actually Francis Buxton from Pee Wee's Big Adventure after being put in the witness protection program to get away from that monster who is Pee Wee Herman. Uh, and man, this is an exciting, uh, this is an exciting concept today. We, we were in Paul our- Paul Rubens our... deserves to move on from- <laughs> all of that <laughs> well uh folks we are uh in a very we're, we're in a very special episode today because it is a special uh we are in our gold rush marathon for saint patrick's day starting on saint patrick's day with all of the leprechaun films and and you did say we would skip one however uh we do i do have a little something planned for that episode so stick around for it okay. uh but for now again like you said we're getting ahead of ourselves we're covering the first two films uh, so before we get like kind of into it, brief history. Wh where, uh, what's your what's your experience with the first two Leprechaun yeah. films? And by the way, let's clarify this, right? So because we're doing something different, we're yes, we are covering two films per episode. So we're talking about one and two now. We'll be talking yep. about three and four for our first Patreon special. Uh, the structure will be a little different this time around. We're not doing the good, bad, and ugly thing so much. We're going to be talking about one film then the other because. To me, the things that I like about these movies and the things that I don't like are really intertwined. So breaking it up into sections, it, it's really kind of an impossible task here. You either dig it or you don't. So we're going to just dive into these movies, starting with the first one, starting with the um, <clears throat> classic uh, Leprechaun starring a... <laughs> Uh, pre-fame and very embarrassed of this movie, Jennifer Aniston. And my memory of this movie is going into video stores as a kid and seeing the cover of this, you know, the VHS of this on one of the walls and just being creeped out by it. I actually thought the leprechaun uh, looked, looked uh, scary. And let me just say, I also avoided these movies because of the terrible reputation that follows each and every single one of these films. That being said, I walked into Walmart one day and I saw um, a gift box of these movies that what was, was only, yes, it was only $10. I can which, see the cover of it right now. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. I saw it so many times staring me in the face at Walmart. That really speaks to how highly regarded these movies are. They're about $2 <laughs> each on Blu-ray. But oh, God. what the hell? I buy it. I marathon the movies with a couple of friends and I had a blast. I was so surprised and so happy with how much fun I was having with most of these films. Again, there's that one that we're not going to defend, but that's its own thing. The Warwick Davis timeline, let's call it, I think uh, needs to be defended from the, from the bitter haters that have come after these movies for years. For years they have, uh, and, and so this movie was released in 1993, uh, often credited as Jennifer Aniston's first role, but that is incorrect. It is her first credited role. Her first role came in the 
also under three star masterpiece known as Mac and Me. Uh, but For real? this, yes, that was her Okay. first. It was an uncredited role. Uh, she played a bystander in that film. You gotta Uh, start however, somewhere. you got to start somewhere. However, uh, this film uh, since '93 has been um, has a weird sort of reputation. This, I think, of all of them. There are several that just have these weird reputations about them. And and this is one of them because it's it's often hailed as like the classic of the franchise, but it's also sitting at a 2.4 on Letterboxd, Yeah, which classic is in quotation marks. it is definitely a classic in quotation marks. And it, it's funny because like dude, I started my leprechaun journey with in the hood. <laughs> and uh and it, it it did not scare me, definitely probably gave my brother nightmares. Um but uh Man, it's so funny because like, even at the age that I was when I watched it, I was like, who is this made for? And as I've gotten older, you know, I've, I've, I've grown to uh, have different appreciations for these movies, but I have a complicated history with the Leprechaun franchise for that reason. Um, so I'm excited to get into the first film um, and, and to sort of discuss it. But dude, uh, I, I want to ask you off the bat, because we brought up Jennifer Aniston. Uh, What do you think about Jennifer Aniston in this? Just in this, I actually Just think in this. she, uh, she gives a really impressive debut. I'm pretty happy with all of the acting in this movie, which is rare for um, a horror movie, let alone a horror movie of this ilk, of this kind of um, Z-grade standard. This is the movie's legacy. Uh, the fact that Jennifer Aniston had, um, had her first leading role here and... I think that's why it's even stayed in people's minds long enough to become a franchise because right after this, I think she did friends and blew up again. Jennifer Aniston is embarrassed about this movie now, but you Yes. know, to have a feature film on your resume, a, a profitable one. I mean, this movie did make money Yeah. that um, that matters a lot. Even if the movie itself isn't something that's highly regarded, all that is to say, I like her a lot in this movie. She elevates it. The writing of her character is so-so. We'll get into that. But when you when you have a, a basic premise like this of an evil creature just terrorizing some small group of characters, you want the charisma at the very least to be there. And she brings it along with um, everybody else in the cast. Again, that's one of my first big positives. And she showed she showed for me like one of the things that I think is underappreciated about her performance in this is like she kind of showed what she would be able to do later, which she has a very underrated comedic timing sense. Uh, when she does comedy stuff, her timing is very good. And in this movie, you could see that. I mean, there's one scene in particular where she tries to storm out of the house and she's like, I am out of here. And she leaves and then she immediately walks right back in and says, it's too dark out there. And the way she delivers it, it's just, it's perfect. It's very funny. Um, so even, even though like this is definitely like a horror film and it, well, you know, it's listed as comedy horror. I think that they were definitely going for some comedy. Maybe This is a the little most too much serious horror. of all of the Warwick Davis Oh, Leprechaun very much so. movies. Very, very much so. And it doesn't surprise me because it's the starting point. I think you start with a premise like this, which, you know, say what you say what you will about it, uh, but you really have to believe in a movie like this, or you really have to believe in the comedy of this. I mean, it's it's a little less ridiculous than like a Sharknado, you know, but but it's still one of those concepts you gotta you gotta really buy into either side of it to try to make a movie like this. You gotta buy Well, into there's the some schlock movies, or you gotta buy yeah. into the seriousness. There are some movies that would use a premise like this for comedy, and there Oh, is yeah. comedy here, but I think this is a gimmick film. Um, and again, sometimes it's used for comedy, and I think comedy that lands, like when he has to compulsively clean people's shoes, and that's how they, I mean, okay. This is what I mean. As soon That's as one of my I favorite bring up something parts. I like, I'm realizing they drove away. Like they have this perfect distraction technique and they don't just drive away from the cabin that is being haunted by the killer leprechaun. Dude, just the 
<laughs> okay, think about what you just said as a non-horror fan for a second. <laughs> for just the, this, this I'm not mystified at people. this movie's lack of cross-genre appeal. Oh my okay? god, that's this amazing. is for this is for geeks like you, you and I. Yes, this is, is for people into the unabashedly weird, goofy side of horror. And I'm not gonna yeah. try to claim that this is some kind of masterpiece of that genre. It's not Evil Dead Two or anything it's not it's leprechaun is what it is and god damn it i have to talk about the saving grace of not only this movie but all of these movies Ooh, fucking warwick right davis man yeah. mm -hmm. warwick davis and i didn't want to bury the lead because you know we're going to be prepared to defend some truly um poorly made films but something that continues to be of consistent <laughs> quality here is warwick davis willow himself as the evil leprechaun i think i think without him you have a disaster but with oh, yeah. him just like most of these slasher villain types they elevate the movie absolutely like the only reason i watched those later saw sequels sorry to anybody who worked on them is because of tobin bell's performance as jigsaw and that's why i'll be going to see um the next saw that they're making which uh, he is supposed to return in and warwick davis brings the same kind of iconic energy he's funny he's wicked he's clever he's cruel um they absolutely embarrass him in some sections of this movie but you gotta give it to warwick davis for for making an icon out of what should be a dead on arrival um movie villain Oh, and I'm going to have some nicer things to say about him uh, when we start talking about two, uh, just just based on some parts of his performance in that one. But but he's to, to me, he's like one of the most like unsung heroes of film, you know, like when you when you realize all that he's done. When, when you look up this move, so he's very well known for his role as the Leprechaun. Like, that's something that even non-horror fans are aware is, like, it's this and Willow for some people. Like, that's that's what his career is associated with. But when you look at his letterbox by film popularity, dude, Leprechaun's way down the list. It's not even in the initial preview of his, like, first ten movies. Well, he's also in um, Return of the Jedi, so he's I don't think so Leprechaun... Many, he's in a ton of Star Wars films. He's, he's in quite a few of them. Uh, which, by the way, he plays plays wicket uh, who's like one of the who's the ewok the definitive ewok basically uh you know some people know of other ewoks but you know that's the ewok okay so leprechaun um, is definitely not the worst movie he's ever done then wow you're trying to get stabbed today i didn't know that um <laughs> no no but trying to get assaulted like, with a pogo stick trying to get assaulted with a pogo stick but but in all in all seriousness like he, the things that he's been able to accomplish and the things that he's been a part of in film is, is nothing short of just amazing. And, and seeing him in this, just eating it up, man. He, he knows exactly what he's supposed to be. He knew it from day one. He understood the assignment and he fucking aced it from the first film all the way through to his last performance. In my opinion, there is not a single film that I can highlight as a weak point for him. If I had to say that there was a weakest point, I would probably say this is it personally which is interesting right because again right. this is the movie this with is the one that started at all the closest to you know some solid reputation yeah <laughs> because that's Imagine how it usually that. goes you know the first movie um of any franchise franchise sort of has that advantage and the sequels are fighting this um uphill battle but i agree with you his performance improves i think the movies in a lot of ways improve and will elaborate on that as as we continue to continue to talk about this series but um it's not just warwick davis or jennifer aniston um that i think are turning in really good performances here you know we have ozzy from peewee's big adventure but i love his relationship with um the little kid i think they have Dude. some of the funniest banter in the movie Oh, I, Ozzy is one of the, so like initially I take my notes the same for all of these episodes. I say, what's the good, I say, what's the bad. And you know, episodes like this, I just mend it together and just talk about it as we get there. Ozzy is so, I love Ozzy, man. I love Ozzy in this movie. He's, 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 it, his comedic timing as an actor, I think really is, is really solid. I think his facial expressions are fantastic. Um, I think, you know, if you're going to do a legacy sequel, 
this is the guy you bring back. You know, he, which he's they did bring team. him back, which they did. Yeah, very wisely. Uh, but um, he's a. I think you know an, another actor that I think is just underappreciated because I love uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is is a movie that I hold very dear to my it's heart. It's an all time favorite. It is an. It is a. It is a classic. Um, I think it's one of Tim Burton's best personally, uh, and it's just such a fun movie. And such a big part of that is Francis. And here he is just doing something completely, completely different. He's not nearly the same guy. Only by appearance alone do you know it's the same actor. So good for him. And you know who else is very underrated? The guy playing our love interest for Jennifer Aniston, the guy who leads the paint crew. I actually think he reminded me of a young Kevin Bacon. So I you like actually... Nathan in this. Yeah, I thought he was quite charismatic. Do you agree? I don't. I did not like Nathan in this. Very interesting. We have our first disagreement, ladies and gentlemen. We have our first disagreement. It's going down. Um, no, in all seriousness, like he wasn't a huge problem for me. I just, I just, I sort of felt like he had Friday the 13th, The New Blood, like, written all over him you know what i mean like the guy in that movie we sort of talked about not really being like a great hero you know he he he, he wasn't a bad actor per se and he I'm didn't he lacked uh what i what i expect from that kind of character and i think that the guy who played nathan in this does the same thing for me he just he just does for, something about him just did not connect and that's interesting I, I don't know what it is, and I, I don't even know if that's a complaint that a lot of people have. I mean, people do complain about the acting in all of these movies, but I don't really, I didn't, I, I read through some reviews and I never really saw his name come up, so it's, it's probably just something that just didn't connect with me, but um, I've never really been an Nathan guy, you know? Everybody else in the movie, pretty much, though, I, I did like. Let me tell you, I really enjoyed his dynamic with Jennifer Aniston, and they, and their relationship plays out really differently than you'd expect. That's another yeah. thing I do vaguely admire about these movies. You can't call them predictable. No. I really don't think no. you can, no. especially as we get later on in the series. But uh, by four, at first, just throw everything out the window. You know I mean? <laughs> but at first, I, I really expected a typical love story for one of these movies. But there's a pretty interesting thing going on where Jennifer Aniston, you know, she's a, she's a spoiled brat, but she's also, you know, a very like modern 90s feminist. And he's kind of more of a, an old fashioned sort of guy, you know, working class guy. So they clash a lot. And some of my favorite moments of the movie are when he's, when, when both of them are calling each other out on, on, on their bullshit, you know, <laughs> Jennifer Aniston says that uh, she can't eat meat because she can't do that to animals. And then he points out that her shoes are made of leather that people get by slaughtering animals. And look, that's not something that makes or breaks a movie. That's not something that turns this movie around and makes no, it a classic it adds some charm it adds charm and it adds humanity even yeah. though i don't find this a scary movie and i feel very sorry for anybody that would <laughs> may i recommend a nightlight the people uh, who have the what's what's the term for fear of a little person well then, Return of the Jedi is a way oh, more effective horror wow. movie than fucking. I can't imagine watching The Wizard of Oz with that fear. You know how we all have a thing that we're scared of. I think we also have things that we're definitely not scared of. Oh yeah, um, like something that could never be to you. Like like leprechauns, like how that like could leprechauns. never be scary. <laughs> um, not if you put um, some ugly makeup on it and not if you turn it into a feral, uh, pale creature played by um, a WWE performer. Well, Anyways. We um, yeah, but, but what, well, that's something that we have to talk about too, kind of, is, is the look of the leprechaun. I mean, this sure. is something that becomes iconic as the series goes along and they, they tweak... They tweak things about the outfit and the overall, like, you know, the hair length gets to be different and, and aspects about the face do change over time. But but pretty consistently, like, this leprechaun does look pretty similar. They, they keep a, a decent enough through line until we get to, you know, first uh, origins and then returns. Um, and I get why those movies are different, so I'm not going to really include them in this, but... but you have to sort of applaud the the makeup work through all of these films. Oh yeah, I, I don't find any flaws in it. 
Um, and and I think it's incredibly well done. And I think I think some of the gore effects in this were pretty well done as well for uh, the kind of movie this was. And that's kind of the double edged sword, though. Even though the makeup is well done, I actually think, frankly, it's too good for the sort of tone that I think would really benefit this movie. Um, when the leprechaun kills people, it's pretty unpleasant in this film. And I think that's something that they really turned around um, oh, they course starting corrected. in two. Yeah. <laughs> they course um, corrected, yeah. But like when he snaps the guy's neck, I mean, it's a good effect. Um, yeah. And it seems like something that could be straight out of um, a better movie. But dropped in this movie, it's sort of like what we were talking about with Hollow Man, the most recent episode we did. Yeah. Where that movie had, I mean, it has some really great effects, especially for the time. And I actually think that could have backfired for the movie's overall enjoyability. And with Leprechaun, that is certainly the case. Yeah, you know, it, it didn't tend to bug me as much as I thought it would. Probably because for me, like, I'm so used to... God, and this is sort of going to be a glimpse into how I feel about these movies as a whole, because these are the two movies that I really don't revisit as much. Um, and so, you know, when I watch the other ones, I mean, God, it's clear the tone they're going for. It's very, very clear the tone that they're going for. And it's and, and everything I feel kind of does its best to complement that. It tries to be fun and over the top and exciting. And it didn't feel like this wasn't trying to do that, but it also didn't feel like it was fully trying to accomplish that either. And part of that and there's a few complaints that i can kind of i can kind of throw into this but like i just feel like the direction in this movie is super awkward you know like there are some mm. scenes that don't feel like they're put together well um there are some things that were done that just didn't tend ten this being one of them that just didn't tend to make sense with what i thought they were going to go for in in certain scenes like the tone felt <coughs> excuse me to change in a very specific way in certain scenes and I, did, I I don't know, man. Like this this movie felt like it was almost like the like a cut before the last cut of the movie. Uh, I don't know if that's how everybody else feels about it. And I'm curious with you because you're somebody who has been in the director's chair of a feature film uh, and somebody who has released a film. By the way, uh, the Curse of Professor Zardonicus. Go find it, on, it. Uh, on Blu-ray and scre- streaming on Tubi. Um, you're shilling. But, Stop uh, it. But. Uh, <laughs> Do you feel like uh, this movie has a, like a? Do, do you feel something is off with the with the direction here? Oh, something is off. So, <laughs> the the way I diagnose the problem is the director is trying to make an actually atmospheric, effectively shot horror movie. It's in a cabin in the woods. I actually think he gets some spooky lighting in there during the night scenes. Um, there's some fun uh, misdirection. I, I think the highlight to me is when the leprechaun is going around the cabin and disappearing. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say that the director did a, you know, that he failed. But the problem is he's making this kind of movie centered on a leprechaun. <laughs> that is definitely something that's not going to work out in this movie's favor. To take the premise this seriously, and this is sort of benefit, this is with the benefit of hindsight, because I'm saying this as somebody who enjoys the rest of these movies a lot more, this movie would have benefited by taking itself less seriously. And you might be wondering, how is this movie taking itself seriously? There's a scene where somebody's murdered with a pogo stick. Compared to three or four or the hood movies i mean i'm telling you this movie is trying to be the next halloween right i want it to go all the way i want it to i want to i want it to push all of its chips in on this killer killer leprechaun idea the best moments of this movie are when they do that but most of the movie is actually really standard um just swap out jason for a little green man yeah yeah, and you know, that's the thing, like, I don't feel the director failed with what he was trying to accomplish, but I feel two things happened, and I do think the director did fail somewhere, and I think if the director failed the premise, and I think the premise failed the director, I think both sides of that really happened in this movie, because even though the director did exactly what he set out to do, I don't think the premise was very, 
I don't think the premise worked for that. And I think he also didn't really work for, for the premise of the movie. And, and that's not all on him. Let's be real. Like, this movie was written the, the way that it played out, and I believe that. But, um, and, and that's where the flaws, I think, are. Uh, however, I think it could have benefited from a more, you know, some maybe some more goofy shots. You know, it's, I, I also don't think it helped that there were moments in the score, too, that were very much like, this is funny. Like, this is supposed mm -hmm. to be funny. Meanwhile, there's a man on the ground um, writhing in pain after his knee just got caught in a bear trap. So yeah. it's like, you know, like... It, it feels like this movie, and, and this is something we've talked about a few times on our program, it feels like this movie doesn't understand what it is. And when it doesn't understand and it's not as in on the joke as I think it should be, it hurts the movie. Does it hurt the movie too much? I don't think so. I think it's got enough in there that you could really have some cool memorable moments. You mentioned the pogo stick. That's definitely one of them. Um, but out of all of them, um, this does, I mean, to the point where like when you watch two and you see the more like comedic over the top moments, some of them seem sort of out of place compared to this, uh, because of how much of a difference it is. It, it, it the movies sort of fit together, but they're almost sort of night and day, uh, with mm. some of the crazy shit that they do in, in part two. So, well, I'd um, say that they are very similar, but the difference is that the director of the second learn from the mistakes of this I first agree. one i would agree and is that a is that a good transition to start talking about leprechaun 2 anything else I, we need to talk talk about i don't think so i think that's a good uh good way to a good segue to to episode or to episode two to to the second movie um episode so two. let's uh attack of the leprechaun episode episode two attack of the leprechauns yeah okay um, cool yeah so i think so let me let me start out by asking you this, would you agree with me that this is better than the first movie? No. Wow. We really are going to have a fight. Okay, I can't wait. For this. <laughs> There's a reason, and I'm going to get into that. Uh, I'm going to get into why I don't think this, this is the best movie. But I do want to give some people a little bit of background for this movie. Because uh, they, I just want to give them a glimpse into where we are and where this film is sort of on that spectrum. Uh, so this was released a year after Leprechaun. It was 1994 when this came out. Um, it sits at a 2.3 out of 5, so a 0.1, a 0 .1 lower than the first film. Uh, and this is the guy, the, the director of this would go on to do Idle Hands, uh, which is a pretty, I mean, it's a cult. It's, it's, it's a well-liked movie. It's a cult horror movie. It's a cult um, classic from the 90s. Yeah. Um, so it, it's interesting that they, I mean, this is, this got sort of... Um, Whenever you had a horror film that was popular for a while, nowadays, like, you know, probably like two, three years will pass between movies. Um, there's a lot that goes into that process. But back in the day, like, you're looking at potentially, like, like look at all the franchises. Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, Friday the 13th, Leprechaun, Child's Play. They all had movies that just, like, they fast-tracked, you know, they, that they just... Here we came up with this movie this year. Next year we're gonna have another one come out, and this is the case for Leprechaun. This is a year after the first film uh, came out, um, so you clearly definitely have a, a soft spot for this movie. And so I, I want you to sort of discuss like, well, first off, if I could start us out somewhere, like we talked about Warwick Davis and in, in, in when we were talking about the first mm -hmm. movie, but as I alluded to, he shines far more in this movie and i want to see if you agree with that because it seems like you do well the character of the leprechaun is so much better to me so much more effectively used as a villain in this movie i don't and think he's, he's in it a more proportionate amount i feel like that's one complaint i forgot to bring up with the first movie was i felt like and maybe it's because i'm so used to the other films but i felt like i needed more leprechaun well it's and that classic it's that classic slasher franchise thing. Of, right. Oh, we went from wait. trying to hide the villain, yeah. make them mysterious to there they are. You know, <laughs> Here they are in see. every scene. <laughs> yeah. Now, Leprechaun 2 doesn't have that problem of overexposure for the Leprechaun. No. I, I doubt he has that much more screen time than the first movie. Um, again, I just think, look, I, I'm, I'm really not going to bury the lead. This is easily the best movie in this franchise to me. This is actually really. One this is one I would go to bad for as wow. being an actual good movie. Ooh. No asterisks, no irony. 
I'm a big fan of this movie. I give it five out wow. of five on Letterboxd. Um, I'm sorry? I give it a five out of five on That sounds Letterboxd. like an actual... Oh, I don't know where you're going to land on this, but that sounds like an actually great to me. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, <laughs> it, for a Leprechaun movie, it's actually great. Remember my theory of relativity? Oh, no, not the theory of relativity. Okay, for... Compared for... to Lawrence of Arabia, okay. Oh, God. Okay. It's... It's oh. uh, mid compared to the movie that came before in this franchise. Oh boy, it's Lawrence of Arabia. So, oh no, uh, uh, where to start with this movie? Let, let me oh, just say no. this: I did not know what to expect with this, this movie. It is considered to be one of the more forgettable Leprechaun films, and that's what I was expecting, if anything. But you know, I'm used to disagreeing with the consensus on stuff like this, so I figured I could get some cheesy enjoyment enjoyment um similar to the first film what i got instead was uh really finely drawn characters some really hilarious kills that take advantage of the premise that we are dealing with a killer leprechaun some really creative camera work and i mean i kind of the list goes on and on for me for what this movie is and for what it's following up i'm really happy with this film and um i have a lot in the pros and very little on the cons so i'm going to switch over to you connor seeing uh, as how you know we don't agree and apparently you think the first movie is better i would like to hear what's the disconnect for you i'm in danger um so here's here's where here's where uh all right you weren't prepared for this i can tell <sighs> no I didn't, I didn't think you'd burdened. like it this much. No, I'm not burdened. I'm just nervous. <laughs> um, all right. So, so I'm going to start here, man. Um, Bridget. She is a con for sure. Dude. Just delivers. And, and look, I just want to say this. Just, I just want to throw this out there. The actress that plays Bridget, I'm sure is a wonderful woman. I'm sure she is a very nice woman. I'm sure she's very talented. She does something that I could never do, get in front of a camera on a high-level movie. I could never do that. That being said, she delivers something that I would not consider a performance in this film. Uh, You're not even I, going to call it a performance. I am not even going to call it a performance implies that there was effort no i'm kidding uh no i would call it a performance and i would say it's a bad one um you know this like I'm, I'm i'm listening to her deliver these lines and i'm watching her facial expressions and i'm like man like she belongs in troll too you know she belongs in the room like this is she is incredibly bad at figuring out how to properly deliver a line and I'm not saying she's like that in every film. I've not seen enough of her work to know whether she's a, a talented actress or not. I'm sure she's a very talented person. I'm sure she's a, a lovely person. I would love to just sit down, have a have a have a <laughs> chat with her. But I don't want to watch her. How much you her. hated her in, in her most famous role. I don't want to watch her in this. She's not good to me. And and the character itself is not. I don't think the character itself is is well written. I don't think the character itself is well developed. Um, there's a lot that really bothered me about Bridget and the performance that we got. But she's not character. in the movie that much. That's sort of where I'm coming at it from, where, the, yes, she is the weakest part, but she also has the most minimal screen time. I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I hate to call her a plot device. No, but, she is. You're right. But she's not, uh, she, okay, yes, she's a damsel in distress. And, you know, we can have the debate about about how much we should come down on Leprechaun 2 for not um, being as uh, feminist as it could be. It's fucking 1994. <laughs> like... <laughs> so, um, and that, that was a very cheeky way of addressing that. And to anybody no, who right. yeah. was bothered by, by that in this movie, I apologize. I think where I'm coming at it from, though, is... I really felt the stakes insofar as I really felt for Cody and Morty. By the way, I wish Cody's name was Rick so that this could be the first Rick and Morty adventure. Morty. Um, I thought they were the protagonists 
they had an objective. They had a mission. I understood Cody's feelings. Even if I don't think Bridget is super charismatic, I understand what it, what it means to him having failed her so many times, how much it matters to him to save her. And I think that is just a catalyst for a really fun adventure. And I think where I come down on this movie is I feel like it is the only one here that has credibility as a genuine fantasy horror movie. It's very funny. It's very deliberately funny, but (laughs) the way it, let, let me give you some examples of, of highlights from this movie. So Morty wishes for all of the leprechauns gold. And in the standard movie, the, the, the pot of gold would like probably appear in the air and fall on his head like an anvil or something very blunt. First time I watched like this, that. I, that was my prediction. I was like, it's going to come crashing through the ceiling and crush his head. And no, the sick motherfuckers that <laughs> made this movie put it in his stomach. And this is a character I loved. He's my favorite character of this franchise. And he's played by the best actor, or my favorite actor in this franchise. He has a really great stint on Seinfeld. And they did that to poor Morty, but he deserved it because this is a movie with themes, Connor. This is a movie with something to say. No. Um, and that's just one example. So let me ask you this. All of the moments without Bridget, all of the moments that are really devoted to the leprechaun as the villain, you know, his creativity, his cunning, his, um, you know, whatever you want to say about it. I mean, th- th- that stuff land for you. There are two things that very much landed for me in this movie, and it it helps contribute to 20 or 30 minutes of this movie that I think are just like really good. Um, And two things are Morty, because I very much like Morty as well, uh, and the Leprechaun and what he does in this movie. Like there is literally a moment where they're like, okay, we know you're watching a movie right now about about a killer leprechaun, but just take a few minutes for this killer leprechaun to have a custom go-kart with spikes on the side of it which says i want me gold painted on it and and in the front of it is a is a is one of those anti signs with a shamrock in the middle of it uh the scene that i want to highlight as like one that i literally was laughing out loud during was there's a moment where so so first off I, i didn't really hate cody but i didn't connect with him as much as i i wanted to um, so that was also part of what 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 makes this movie not as the good as actor the first one for me. is is not uh, he's not the strongest he's not the best choice no and I, I I will say that like that's part of what did hurt it for me is like I didn't find the actor to be and again probably a nice guy I don't want to shit on this guy I hate shitting on people but that's what this show's all about not shitting on people but he he didn't deliver a performance that I resonated with and I didn't like seeing him on screen. The character I think was well written, where I think that's that's very much uh, juxtaposed by Bridget's character. Um, but but that's part of the reason why the film didn't land with me as much. But when the Leprechaun's just doing his thing, and there are scenes with Cody that I really did like, and one of them is this it's dude. I laughed so hard at this. So so they they go into this uh, bar, right? They're they're hiding out in this bathroom yes. in this bar, and then. Um, First off, like the little guy that's in every movie, he's like the little person that's in everything. He's in Bad Santa. He's in he's in a ton of stuff. Well, he's not in everything. He's in so many things as just the little person of the movie. Um, which good dude, he got that bag, man. He was in Bad Santa. He was in uh, he was in um, Jingle All the Way. He was in that terrible um, d- d- disaster movie or something. Uh, I don't know. He's been in a ton of stuff. Uh, which good for him. I, I love the guy. Um, so he, we have a misdirection with him. We think he's the leprechaun and all that stuff. It's very funny. But then, then Cody goes out into the bar to get Morty, and Morty's not responding. And you sort of think for a second, like, oh shit, did the leprechaun get to him? Like, what's happening? And all that he says is, he's here. And Cody turns, and there's this hilarious visual of this leprechaun just sitting across the bar, just tapping his finger, angrily looking at them. And, and there's just, they, they, they timed it so well. I was laughing my fucking ass off when that camera panned over and the leprechaun was just sitting at the bar, spotlight above him, just angrily looking at these two. And then um, they challenge him to a drinking game. They challenge him to a drinking game, which it's really funny because of the way that they do it. He's 
He's like, we got to get out of here. And, and Morty just goes too late. And then you just hear whoosh. And he's right next to him. And, and he's, he looks just as pissed off. He looks tired of this shit. He just wants it to be over, which I got to say is part of what I said about praising Warwick Davis's performance in this, because there were several times. And I even told my wife at one point watching this, I, there were several times where I almost felt bad for the leprechaun, you know, where I'm like, man, this guy's just trying to get married. Like, let him be, man. Like, this this girl sucks anyways. Just let her, just let him do what he wants to do. Um, I wow. felt bad for him it's at a few points in this movie. Um, so, man, he just, he kills it. And that scene is just like a perfect capture of like why there is a stretch of this movie that I will put up against much of the franchise is like a very, very solid might be the best 20 minutes of the franchise. But for me, that's the whole movie, man. I really don't think it ever loses that steam. Uh, you know, I think the opening is is really brilliant um, for what this movie is. <laughs> we go back in time, we see uh, the leprechaun, and that's why I mean it's like, a, it, it reminded me of like, a, this movie feels like a... a a Dungeons and Dragons campaign led by a dungeon master with a really weird sense of humor, but <laughs> and really he's grows also on, on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> but it really grows on you. Um, and it, it felt almost like I felt like I was watching some kind of old fable brought to the modern day, brought to life. Um, the first leprechaun has none of that sort of mythic quality to it. That is just create a, a generic, if not, you know, moderately well-made slasher movie and drop a leprechaun in it um this movie actually to me feels like a leprechaun movie uh doesn't exactly make it scary but it makes it worth watching compared to compared to the first movie well and when comparing it to the first movie you also have to highlight something that we did bring up which was which was the kills in this movie uh they 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 do a much better job of of actually capturing the tone of the film exactly uh, there is a man who sticks his face into a lawnmower thinking it's a woman's breasts um very weird thing to say out loud but i promise the movie makes it uh it gives it context um and, and by the way this is a this is a douchebag of a character who yes, absolutely yes, deserves it, it it was it literally tried to pressure a girl into having sex and then when she didn't he said uh that she was a stuck-up bitch so he, he definitely you know is a character who who was a bit of a douchebag um, but interestingly, man, it, like it doesn't stop there. Like there's, by the way, early film appearance of uh, Mad TV and Halloween franchise alum Michael McDonald in this movie. Um, mm. I, I love Michael McDonald. I think he's hilarious. Uh, Stuart is a character he plays on Mad TV that I think a lot of people would know. Um, uh, but, and who does uh, he play in Halloween? Uh, he was in Halloween Kills. Uh, he was one of the the, uh, the the gay couple that lived in the Myers oh, house. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was one of them. Um, okay. So, was he Big yeah. John or Little John? Uh, he was the he was the tall one. I think they called... Didn't they call him Little John? He was Little John. John. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he was Little John. Um, but uh, yeah, of Mad TV fame, I grew up on Mad TV. Um, I actually um, didn't even remember that he was in this until watching a little stand-up special he did on the show called... Uh, I don't even remember what it's called now that I'm, that I'm thinking about it. Um, but it's a it's a show where comedians come and tell stories about things that have happened to him. And at one point he was like, all I've done is is got killed by a leprechaun in Leprechaun 2. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, he's in this. And he plays the bartender in this movie or the waiter. Um, and he gets in another great steam. scene. Uh, yeah, another great scene and another great way to kill somebody. Uh, it's weird, man, like because in any other context, if you're like, man, what a creative kill. I love that kill. Uh, it's a weird thing to say, but in the context of horror films, it's just it, 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 movies find a way to make it fun. And this movie, well, in the did context a of leprechaun job. movies, right? I mean, that's what the leprechaun well, should be. It should be a yes. license to have fun with your it should be, yes. movie. And um, and this movie is kind of like full speed with that. And I think uh, Leprechaun Three, I think, was also trying to keep that momentum going. But I think uh, I think the wheel started to come off there, so they completely reinvented it with Four. Um, I'm not saying you could build a whole franchise on this movie or a whole tone, but if there is a movie that to me seemed to have a lock on what to do with this concept, it's two. I think so. I think two was the most 
franchise friendly of them even though it was not friendly to the lore of the first film i don't think oh um, and we have to address that i'm sorry i forgot yeah. to mention this isn't even the same leprechaun from the first movie none of these are the same leprechauns they're all new leprechauns except for leprechaun returns that's technically yes. the same guy but the legacy sequel the legacy sequel but but in yeah it's so interesting right because like when you watch this you're you, you get the impression that they're just complete and, and with i think with every film you sort of get this impression that they're just ignoring what came before almost like they're rebooting it with every single entry but they're not and and i think this would have been the most franchise friendly of the leprechaun films where like i could have seen them doing something that it further explored the mythology behind this leprechaun and 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 what the significance was and were there other things that he established uh during these olden times that now is going to come into factor to bring him back or to do something different with it it felt like the most franchise friendly because of the story and the backstory that it had did i love that backstory scene not as much as you um but did i appreciate the fact that this film tried to do something that wasn't just like you said and I like Leprechaun 1 a little bit more than this, but it was sort of a drag and drop, you know? Like, mm. here's this creative premise, let's drop it into a Friday the 13th movie and take out Jason and just yeah. see how it goes. And, no. and it's not just mm. that, I give it more credit than that, but this feels like it's establishing a tone of like, this is fun, but we have the horror elements that are still here and we could build off of this story more if we wanted to. Now, something I do prefer about the first movie is the leprechaun's weakness. Um, a four-leaf clover is a much cooler idea to me than, um, what is it, wrought iron here? I don't even now, know if that's legit a leprechaun lore. four-leaf clover, I think, is still... I think is still a weakness because he does have the anti four leaf clover thing on his go kart. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's still a weakness for them. But I think they want. It's not to a weakness do that comes up. Right. I think they wanted to do something different with like that style. I didn't hate how it was implemented, but I did think it was a stupid idea. Um, I, I think uh, there are movies that did the weakness much better. Yeah. And now I it does lead to him getting locked in that cage, which does lead to uh, my favorite moment of the movie. And that's the thing about Cody. Say what you will about the actor, man. I mean, no, we don't have a breakout star here like Jennifer Aniston. It, it would be cool right. if we did. But that character is one of the smarter. He, he's smarter than he has any right to be for being the star in a Leprechaun movie. And I'll say this too, like the actor did have something about his look where you like, I kept thinking like, man, I know this guy from somewhere. I know him from somewhere. I didn't. I just knew him from this. <laughs> but he feels like the poor man's version of a couple different actors. He does. He feels like the poor man's version of a couple different actors. I, I kept getting vibes of a few people, um, one of which I think, I think the one that I kept confusing him with the most was the guy from uh, Hocus Pocus. Um <laughs> Yeah. which much later i get it but uh or not much later but a little later um but around uh, the same time I, around uh, yeah uh, close enough where i could have i guess uh, mixed him up although he um you know cody does look a little older in this than than he did but but i will i want to ask you about this because this is something i read a lot of the reviews um they talked about the ending of the movie being a negative and mm -hmm. i felt like it was um i did have a problem with it i, I didn't i don't i didn't feel satisfied with the ending personally uh, I, I wanted more from it. I wanted a little bit more um, flair, I guess you could say. Uh, wh what did you think about the ending of this movie being a fan of it? I don't know. I mean, if you're not into the movie by the end, I don't think the end's going to turn you around. But right. as somebody who was having a lot of fun, um, I mean, this movie is full of setups and payoffs. You know, that little scene with the, the other uh, little person actor that you mentioned, unfortunately, I can't remember his name. You know where he's passing out these chocolate um um help me out here gold coins yeah the, the gold chocolate coins yeah yeah tony cox and, is his name by the way tony cox okay. cody takes it and you sort of forget about it until it comes back at the perfect moment um and you also see that cody is smarter than uh than the leprechaun is used to because the leprechaun uses a trick he's been using throughout the whole film mm -hmm with this uh, hallucination abilities and Cody doesn't fall for it, even though at first, you know, it looks like he might. It is not an explosive ending. It's not 
I mean, what other ending could I even hope from a movie like this? It, you know, it, it pays off a couple of things. There's a really fun chase throughout that whole layer of the leprechauns, uh, which was the perfect place to have the climax. in. by the way, Warwick Davis says that he felt that this was a lower budget shoot, which is kind of baffling to me because this felt like it had way more production value than the first leprechaun. It did. It did for me too. Um, I'm actually surprised to hear that because I thought yeah. it did. I thought this was much better. Big improvement. But having the right director will, you know, a, a director can take five thousand dollars, make it look like five hundred thousand. Another director do the opposite. Um, and I feel like Fair. again, I, I don't think the director did a terrible job in that first Leprechaun movie, but I know he did have a higher budget, and I'm just surprised at the results that we get here. Maybe Jennifer Aniston was already a really high earner back then maybe she got a big chunk of that change and cody did not she bust the rhymes of this movie <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean well tell me your thoughts uh since you didn't like it as much I'm, I'm curious to hear what did you think of the ending um i was definitely let down by it um i i i think where i fall on it is this like i didn't the only reason that I think I'm not disappointed more in it, like I, I'm, I'm a little let down. I, I, I would have wanted a little mm. bit more from it. Um, but I think the only reason I'm not like upset about it, like really upset about it, I didn't put it down in my negatives or anything. Is just like, what else could you do? You know, like I, I just kept trying to think about it and like thinking about, you know, how how could they have done it differently? Because that's something that I think about a lot. And that's like movies that I absolutely hate. I can think of, of a way that I would have done the movie differently. Some of them I have since forgot because I don't want to ever fucking think of that movie again. Um, but this is just one of those where I was like, what could they have done differently? And I was like, I don't know that they could have done anything differently. Like you said, I mean, there is a payoff of, of, of the giving that gold coin in a way um, Tony Cox's character sort of saves him, even though Tony Cox's character is literally uh, in the credits as African-American leprechaun. Um, you know, it, it's just cool to see them. I think the reason I'm not as upset about it is I, I think a, I couldn't think of a better ending and, and B, um, I think it's cool that they actually gave a purpose to something that could have easily just been a throwaway funny moment, a fake. It, it's all it was, was a fake out, but it, it wasn't. I mean, they, they brought it back. And for a movie like this, I didn't expect that. And, and for that, I do have to, it offsets it for me. It's not a con, but it's, I still don't love what they did with it. I, I would have oh, no, loved it's, a, hmm. a more elaborate. And I like that part that was in there. I think they could have kept that and done something that was still a little bit more elaborate, but yeah, Here's where I'm coming from. I'm used to these movies dragging on and on. You know, That's Michael fair. Myers just keeps getting up. That's a problem I have with the original Halloween. I know people like this, but I got pretty tired of how many times Michael Myers got up and um, kept attacking Jamie Lee Curtis. I was ready for that motherfucker to get shot and thrown off that balcony. This movie does not overstay its welcome for me. And I would rather, I would rather that and risk, you know, making it feel a little smaller or a little shorter than it should than doing the opposite and just dragging this thing out. I mean, that's something a leprechaun movie can't afford to do. Once you lose that charm, once I, once I start to get impatient with you, we're done. <laughs> I am, right. I'm changing um, the channel or my Blu-ray disc and I'm, you know, I'm walking away. You know, this movie needs to keep earning your attention. And I think this movie, more than any other film in the franchise, did that for me. And, you know, that's that's something that, like, you know, I jokingly talked about being in danger and, like, how I was scared of this. But oh, in, in all seriousness, like, I think franchises like this are extremely important in, in any genre of film. Uh, and Because you need movies that... I think anytime you watch a movie, there's a lot of emotion involved with it. And, and that that affects how your reaction of the movie is, is going to turn out to be. Uh, but movies like this are so important because it gives you something different to expect from each of them. 
every one of these movies has something different about it that you can you can distinguish is that movie. maybe with the exception of like five and six i think those are kind of interchangeable um just because they took the same premise i, I that's those are the only two films in the entire franchise that, that take the exact same premise and put them together. And they're still not sequels, um, technically. Even though, still, yeah, you know, even though it's um, back to the hood, not a sequel. Back to the hood. Oh, no, it, it is the hood with an A, um, now that I'm thinking about it. But, <laughs> you know, honestly, like, uh, you know, it's, it's so funny because, like, I, I feel like movies like this are important for that reason. For us to have movies that we connect with more than others and that... Ca- can almost form like a bond between people. This is a movie that brings people together. <laughs> and no matter what I can say about this one compared to the first one, I don't think the first one has that quality as much as this one does. Even though I personally enjoyed the first one a little bit better than this. Um, and I, by the way, I would probably put that difference between like a point one in a rating, um, maybe point two. Uh, this is a movie that I would rather show somebody this is the movie that I would rather watch with somebody, if not just to to take the moments that are great and then laugh at the moments that aren't great because they are laughable at some points mm-hmm. when it doesn't, when it's not great. I mean, shit. Yeah. I mean, most of Bridget's uh, screen time good is Lord. laughable. It's oh, not yeah. a good performance. I mean, you, you really have to be in a good mood to watch this or it'll put you in a good mood depending on, on, on what place in your life you are. Um, okay. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, I, I want to say like, you know, this, if, if we're talking about like movies in this franchise that we would show to people as we go on, I think we're going to get closer um, at least in our next episode uh, to movies that I would probably recommend first. But if, if somebody came to me and was like, Hey, I have Leprechaun one and two double feature, which one, sh- which one do you think I should watch? I I just want to have a good time. Like it's a movie about a killer leprechaun. I'd be like, well, you might want to start with two. (laughs) You might want to start with two. You don't need the context of the first one to enjoy this. And, uh, and, and I think it is a more enjoyable overall experience as a film. The only way I would recommend the first one over this is if the person I'm recommending it to is just the biggest fan of friends, just impossibly big fan of, of friends um or the um seminal classic just go with it and look i love jennifer anderson i actually agree with you she's underrated in a lot of ways both her comedic and dramatic abilities that's something i think um un- unfortunately friends really downplayed and yeah i think she's been con- she's continued to be underserved in a lot of ways um man let me tell you something if she could have been in this movie if she could have played Bridget, don't you think we would have a top tier leprechaun movie? I do. Um, I do think I do. I think I would find this much better than the first one. I think what I came away from the first one enjoying more than I enjoyed about this one was like there was no moment in the first one where I was like, wow, this movie is bad. But there was a moment in this movie where I did think that again. There's a moment that turned that corner for me, and and where I'll get my final uh, in my final verdict, we will get there. But in the first movie, I never was like, "Wow, this is like, wow, what the, what okay. were they thinking?" So in the first screen? movie, when the leprechaun is fighting all of our heroes outside the cabin, and they and they fight this mystical being by um by throwing their shoes at him. That didn't raise any alarms. I, I don't know, man. I thought that was funny. I I, I got a chuckle out of that. You didn't think it, it was embarrassing? No, not really. Okay. It, well, that's it, clearly it, where we differ. It, and and that's the thing is, I think I'm honestly like based on this conversation, I'm really interested to see where we fall three and four. Um, because I'm just those, really those excited movies are wild cards. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited to see that, um, and I'm I'm very very excited to see where you'll land on returns. Um, I'm glad I was able to talk you into that one. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, look at the end of the day, like I mean it sincerely when I say that I think this is the much more fun movie, and I think if I'm gonna look at the end of the day, when am I not gonna recommend a movie with Clint Howard in it? You know what I mean? We didn't like, even mention him because that's. He's only one of um, a lot of really kick-ass people 
in this yeah. movie. In this he's, movie, he's cast. also a very small part. So like, he's not like a huge part of this movie. Um, I guess I mentioned Michael McDonald. What? He's not really yeah. either. But um, it's not the ice cream man. He doesn't need to be the star. Right. Of the no movie. He Although need he to be could the star for anything. I mean, yeah, uh, he could have done a really good Uncle Morty if he had been cast in that role. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, I, you know, it's funny, like Clint Howard's another guy that just like every time you think of something he's done, maybe with the exception of the ice cream man, but maybe not, depending on where you fall in that film. Uh, you know, like think about everything he's in, man. He's great in The Grinch. He's he's great in uh, he's, dude, great. he's even he's even great in Three from Hell. <laughs> He's even great as Mr. Baggy Bridges in Three from Hell. By the way, um, I'm so glad you say that. I have to correct a serious error on our part. Serious error. Oh, guys, this is our apology video. Yeah. All right. We're is... gonna we're gonna take we're gonna clip this and we're gonna put it up on our channel as not that bad apology video. We're gonna this is gonna be black and white, and I'm sure the the sad piano music is coming up. Okay. You get the tears. All right. right. All right. Guys. In our last video, we forgot to give a shout out to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. It was the most embarrassed I have ever felt in my professional career and in my personal one. And you see, Connor's just been like that the whole time, the whole time since. So That's we're going to correct, we're going to correct that right now. Uh, I don't expect you to forgive us, but I hope you do. I just um, want to say before we before we correct, I just want to say um, we made a serious lapse in judgment, and and this is something that we are embarrassed about. Something that that is not becoming of a brand, like not that bad a movie podcast. We would never ever intentionally cause this much harm, and and this much just see turmoil. in that moment. In that moment, we were that bad. In that moment, <laughs> we knew we were that bad. And, and and that's a rating we deserved. And that is our final verdict. Okay, so here's how we're going <laughs> to... God, God damn it. Oh, that was God. awful. Yeah, that so was, that here's how I'm going to correct this. We're going to make another apology about that apology. <laughs> here's the here's how it comes full circle like rob zombies halloween 2 Ooh. leprechaun 2 is the best in the entire franchise whoa whoa <laughs> shit i didn't expect it to be phrased like that whoa if you don't want controversy don't come to the king don't <laughs> oh Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. All right. Okay. So are we ready for final yeah. verdicts? I think we are. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I I'd like you to um by the way, I want to take exception to something you said. Technically the most popular film that uh Siobhan Durkin, who played who played Bridget, her most popular film is Tommy T Rex. So I don't want to hear you say anything about this being our most popular film. But anyways, let's let's uh, let's continue uh, and let's let's give our final verdicts here. So I want to start with you, buddy, with the first film, um, with the first Leprechaun movie. Uh, where is where do you fall on that? What are your final thoughts? Um, yeah. What Overall, I find the first Leprechaun to be something of wasted potential. Ooh. It's sporadically funny. It's sporadically whimsical. Um, Warwick Davis and the rest of the cast is consistently good and probably better than the movie really deserves. I've heard people call this movie boring. I've heard people say it's one of the worst horror movies of all time. Easily not the case. Um, it's not even the worst movie in this franchise. That's for certain. No, so, it is not. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it's not that bad. Uh, I don't have high praise for it. In some ways, I'm disappointed by it. I always, whenever I watch it, I feel like I'm going to be more taken with it than I am. Um, but then again, movies like Leprechaun 2 raise the bar so high. <laughs> oh, well, uh, in regards to my feelings on the first Leprechaun film, um, I would say, truthfully, uh, some of it feels like 
a second to last cut of a of a horror movie that could have turned out to be uh very 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 good um as far as like you know there there could have uh, I, I feel like there were things that were missing for sure but I, I really i would have really enjoyed it more if i felt like it was more complete but for that uh, with it feeling as incomplete as it does for me and with so many things not landing like it like it's supposed to um i, I feel like the movie has so much charm and and it's got so many things that you can just look at and just enjoy. And I love Ozzy so much, and I love Jennifer Aniston. And you know, honestly, I just I I, I can't hate this film. Um, and you know, it gets better in the franchise uh, than than this. Um, but uh, I, I can't I can't hate this movie. It's 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 it, yeah, it's not that bad. Fair enough. Now we have another movie to. Um... To judge here and yes, i would like to hear your verdict first my verdict on on leprechaun 2 um look there's no way to beat around the bush there are parts of this movie that are genuinely awful um specifically revolving around the character of bridget um i think <laughs> I'm in danger. Uh, I think this is the second worst Leprechaun movie. Um, Are you for real? But, Are yes, you but, for motherfucking real? But hear me out here. First off, I haven't rewatched three and four yet. Could change. But for the 20 to 30 minutes of this movie that are just the best time so fun so good so enjoyable hilariously awesome for that and for the legendary warwick davis's performance this movie is certainly not that bad hmm and that well, it's not my lucky day. Me and the left have that in common. Well, Fuck you lucky charms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lucky charms right. need a dick. Yeah, and then don't don't bother apologizing. I don't want your crummy apology. <laughs> um, it'll 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 be fake, just like my Rob Zombie's Halloween two apology. Yeah, <sighs> Leprechaun two is everything that I wanted the first movie to be. I think. It is still the only film in this franchise to achieve anything close to greatness with the concept of a killer leprechaun. I think it is more clever than it has any right to be. I think it's more inventive and more creative than it has any right to be. I think Warwick Davis comes away with uh, one of his best performances throughout this uh this franchise and is the best showing for the leprechaun and for what he is capable of as a movie villain all that is to say i'm done blowing this movie i'll just come on say it is actually great i yes i adore this movie i it, yes! and it wasn't just a it wasn't just a fluke you know from watching it for the first time when i rewatched it i I loved it just as much. It's a movie that I will, I think, routinely go back to more so than a lot of actually acclaimed horror movies. Um, make of that what you will. This isn't the good takes podcast. This is the not that bad podcast. It, well, it does say in our intro, really bad takes. And we, we, <laughs> that. Um, we no, honestly, bluffing. dude, like, I, when I'm cheering, I'm not doing so facetiously. I'm not doing so to to mock what you said. I'm incredibly happy that you landed on actually great. Um, that warms my heart and truthfully makes me want to go and watch the movie again, even though I just, just finished it before we, yeah. we started recording. Uh, because it makes me feel like I missed something. And, and not only does it make me feel like I missed something, but it also makes me so happy that this film brings you that much joy because that's what it was intended to do. And I'm sad that it didn't connect with me the way that it connected with you. But I trust, you know what? And I, I just want to come out and say this. Um, Child's Play 3 started as my second least favorite in that franchise. 
I and it that. has now become one of my favorites in that franchise. I love it after our episode. I if we back then you we did not it. have we did not have a four rating scale back then. Mm-hmm. We only had a three rating scale back when we when we covered that movie. But if we ever revisit our final verdicts, which is an interesting idea, if we ever decide to do that. Um, Child's Play 3 revisited? It's possible. I I would raise my rating for Child's Play 3. Uh, and, and that's a movie that I went into the episode saying it's that bad. I went into the episode with that written down as my final verdict, and I ended with saying it's not that bad. I would since go higher. Um, and, and this is one of those movies that I have hope for. I don't see it turning to it's that great. I just don't see it happening. I, I hate bridget so much (laughs) she is such an awful character and there's nothing redeeming about her at all for me however i am so 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 incredibly happy to see a movie like this get an actually great from somebody who has some of the best intellectual takes on film that i have heard for leprechaun you're shilling again how dare you listen 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 we've we've been doing this show for a while and the feedback that we get is is clear you have smart takes when it comes to movies. You have intelligent way of, of, of speaking about this stuff. And the fact that you just put Leprechaun 2 in the category of actually great makes me so incredibly happy and makes me so incredibly <laughs> hopeful here's the thing, about Connor. what the show will be. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's the thing. I'm not intelligent. I'm brave. <laughs> I'm bold. Um, actually, Batman my... brave in the bold? My five out of five letterboxed review for Leprechaun 2 says, that's right, you cowards. Um, I'm convinced that there is some kind of conspiracy to keep this movie down. And look, I get it. As much as I am, um, you know, hyperbolically um, gushing about this movie and how much of a good time I had with it. It's a Leprechaun movie. It's going to fight that uphill battle. It's, it's something lamer than a Leprechaun movie. It, it's a sequel to a Leprechaun movie. I will post this. If this were the first Leprechaun movie, and especially if it could actually afford to get somebody like Jennifer Aniston, I think this movie would have a really decent chance at being a bona fide cult classic. I don't think I'll ever see it get to a cult status in my lifetime, not unless we give it the not that bad push, which that's what we're here for. Let's give it a not that bad bump, guys. Let's do this. Yeah, that should be a but, t-shirt. <laughs> you know, and, and I especially admired this from a screenwriter's perspective. I was shocked at how many ideas, setups, and payoffs. And I, I said I used this word facetiously earlier, but I think there is something thematic going on in Leprechaun 2 compared to Leprechaun 1. I mean, you can't really you can't really summarize um what that movie is trying to say at all, but Leprechaun 2. I thought was getting at something about greed, about <clears throat> responsibilities. Um, gosh, if I gush about this movie anymore, I'm pretty sure I'll be incarcerated. So why don't we <laughs> wrap it up before things really go off the rails? No, uh, in all seriousness, I'm happy to see that this is one of the 36 films you've given five stars to on Letterboxd. Uh, that mean, that that, <laughs> that is something that I very much enjoy. Uh, for now, though, um, anybody who enjoyed this episode, we hope you liked it. If you're seeing this, uh, you're seeing it on YouTube or on our podcasting platforms. Uh, there, this special is going to be moving to our Patreon. So the remainder of our episodes will be there. They'll come out later at some point. Um, We don't really know when they're going to come off of Patreon. So you want to make sure you get in there and you subscribe at any tier, any of them, the lowest tier, the highest tier, whatever you feel like doing, subscribe at any of them. And you can see not only this special, but every monthly special that we release from this point forward and every monthly special that we've released before this came out. So consider heading to patreon.com slash not that bad and helping us contribute to our goal of reaching $100 a month uh, to hopefully do this full time 
someday. <laughs> but for now, to at least do this on a weekly basis. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that, that's what we're, we're looking to do. Uh, if you, if you want to follow us on social media, you can find us as well. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Not That Bad Pod and on Twitter at Not That Bad M is in movie, P is in podcast because some bastard took Not That Bad Pod. And uh, I, I hope that, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'm going to pass it to my co host to continue to close us out. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, if you want to continue hearing cringy content, uh, <laughs> Click that subscribe button, click the follow button, do what you got to do because you don't want to miss out. Again, we're going to talk about the entire Leprechaun franchise. And um, I think we should, me and Connor will probably do a list of actually good movies at the end that we prefer less to the Leprechaun movies. I think we need to really put our money where our mouth is on this. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's yeah. throw a teaser in here. Okay. Both Gabe and I are going to put one of the most critically acclaimed films <laughs> of the last 30 plus years on a list of movies that we prefer the Leprechaun films over. And I can, that's a guarantee. And it's going to be the, probably the same movie. I can guarantee you it will be there. Just going to give you a little teaser. For the last episode, that episode will be us covering Leprechaun Returns, and we will put a massive, critically acclaimed blockbuster film on that list. All right, guys. That's a guarantee. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Subscribe to that Patreon if you want to hear it. Until then, until next time, I'm Gabe. I'm Connor. And this is Not That Bad, signing over.